Minecraft is a huge game, but sometimes it just isn't big enough. I've been craving a little variety in my game, so I created a mod pack I'm calling Codacraft to expand the game and explore what the modding community has to offer. Here's how it went. This may be modded, but the early game is still basically the same. Spawn in, punch trees, mine stone, loot village, collect animals, period. After the farms were set up, I dug a hole down to deep slate looking for caves to explore. We found loads of diamonds and a few mine shafts. We even found an underground house, which had some good stuff in it. So the builder in me wanted to collect mossy cobblestone because I didn't quite know what I wanted to do with the starter house, and then I fell into lava. I honestly thought everything burned up in the lava, and then I remembered I have a grave mod installed and it saved all of my items. We also played a game of hide and seek with a rascal, who gave us this bundle for finding it three different times. Not sure if that's how hide and seek works, but okay, I'll take it, free bundle. With better gear, I decided it was time to explore some. I wanted to find as many building materials and saplings so I could experiment when we were building the starter house. I came across this small ship dungeon and got a little too cocky. In my defense, those were some very cleverly hidden slabs. And yes, I know that there's water all around, okay? I- okay, I get it. After getting my stuff back again, I found a skeleton dungeon and took that on. With this one going much better than the first, and also giving a lot better loot. I also found this cool lighthouse and lit up the top of it. So we're using the easy magic mod that allows you to reroll your enchantments, meaning I didn't need quite as many levels as vanilla to get good gear. But I have a mod that allows you to make your own mob spawners, and I really wanted to use it. For the mod to work, you need to collect these spawner fragments from destroying natural spawners in the game. These create an empty spawner that you then place a mob soul into. You get these souls with the soul steal enchantment. The drops are reasonable and better with looting. It didn't take too long to get a few souls to use in a custom farm. We ended up stacking four together and the rates are just great. Unfortunately, it didn't help much. A few of the other mods add magic enchantments that don't really help me in any way, but they seem to be very heavily weighted in the enchanter. To get around this issue, I used another mod that made an infuser. This table is basically an amped up enchantment table and allows me to pick and choose what enchantments I want at a fairly reasonable experience cost. And that is how we were able to get all of these wonderful enchantments. But if you take a closer look, you'll notice one thing is missing from all of our gear. Yeah, sadly there's no way for us to get mending in modded Minecraft. You still kind of have to do it the vanilla way, either through villagers or finding it somewhere. And well, I've been watching a lot of Hermitcraft recently, as I'm sure most of you have been. And I think the way that I want to get mending, at least for the first couple of books, is by fishing. So we're going to sit here, I'm going to throw on some music, and we're going to have a nice chill time. And hopefully, our luck is not as bad as Green's is. Ooh, first catch. Okay, we have been doing this for nearly half an hour now, and I still haven't gotten a single mending fishing rod or a, an enchanted book. I've gotten one enchanted book, and that's it, in this half an hour. And I'm currently being bombarded by drowns, so I think if we're going to keep this up any longer, it's probably a good idea if we create a little dock or something, maybe a safe space on land that we can fish off of instead of being on a boat out in the middle of this little lake. Because, uh, yeah, this this is getting a little annoying. I'm trying to fish peacefully, guys. Could you just leave me alone? I'm, I'm just trying to fish peacefully. That's it. So, yeah, I think we need to create a little dock house, maybe right here, maybe over there, but somewhere here in this area so we can continue our fishing escapades. So, I somehow screwed up the mods and my replay footage, leaving the time lapse looking like this. Not, uh, not super comprehensible. But, uh, yeah, this is the outline I landed on.
Okay, the outline is done, and I think what we're gonna do is go with a pattern using these uh, oak and spruce beams like this to create kind of like a, a Lincoln Log-like cabin. I don't really have a build style in mind for this modded world, so we're just kind of gonna build with whatever we can at the moment. And currently this feels like a really cozy lake house, so that's kind of why we're going with this sort of a build palette. And I don't know if we'll carry it through the entire build, but I think this bottom section at the very least is going to be of this style. And then we'll see what we get up to with the rest of it. But with the outline done, now it's time for me to start adding blocks, adding walls, and then uh, we'll come back in, we'll add some details together, and we'll see what we can do with all these modded blocks. You'll never guess it, but this affected every one of my replays. But that's okay, because you're about to get the tour. And after so much time playing around with all the modded detail blocks, we finally have our fish house. This build turned out pretty good. There are so many blocks added with all the mods that I have that it was really hard to try and pick and choose what I liked while experimenting and trying to be completely fresh with everything that I used. We landed in a really chaotic, hectic spot with all these details because I wanted it to feel like this house had been lived in for a long time and that someone had just cluttered their area in their space with all these little fishing things, crates everywhere, empty crates, old fossils, old barrels of fish, just every which way to make this place feel lived in and like it's been here for a long time. And how convenient, it's raining. Uh, but yeah, we'll take coverage under this little umbrella thing here. The idea initially before we started this build was to have something that we could fish off of and we can do that very- Oh, that isn't supposed to happen. Um, we should be able to- To- Sit? Interesting. Okay, we'll try the other chair. Nope. Alright, there we go. We're sitting- on, on a bench that's technically supposed to be a footstool. But now, we have a spot that we can fish off of. Nice and peacefully without drown interrupting us. And uh, we're almost guaranteed not to get a mending book on this pool, but I guess we'll see. Yeah, no book. Either way, I'm really happy with how this came out. I think all the little details that we managed to, uh, to fit in here, there's a lot of modded stuff, but then there's also a couple of little vanilla things here. Like this is just a composter with some barrel trap doors. This is modded, this isn't quite. Uh, we got a lot of stuff with the chip mod and uh, you saw when we first came up here, this is actually a coffin. Yeah, a coffin, but it looks like, like a bunch of crates. And you know, it's just finding stuff here and there that kind of fits within the theme of a fish house. Uh, something you might find on the dock or in some kind of a coastal town. I really wish, uh, I don't know how many of y'all played Fallout 4, but the Far Harbor DLC, I used to play around with the, uh, the editor or whatever it's called, the settlement builder in Fallout 4. And they had some like buoy hanging on uh, that you could detail uh, some like fish lines and stuff. So that's what we tried to mirror here with these ropes. I believe this is a supplementaries pack. And uh, really we just tried to pack as much in here as we could. Cause of course the idea was that this house has been here for quite some time. And uh, maybe there's some newer expansions here and there, but the front of it is very worn. Uh, this maybe is one of the older faces of the build, one of the oldest faces that was originally here. Uh, then the stock came and then that expansion onto the back. But uh, yeah, we tried always with our builds to try and, you know, show how it evolves over time. Um, maybe some weathering has affected it and uh, how people have gone about detailing it, decorating it with their little flower pots on the windowsills and adding life to it in their own little ways. And one little thing right here on the porch, um, a, a plant that died that maybe we tried to stick out here and maybe we forgot about it, left out in the sun for too long, but now we're trying to rehydrate it with some water and uh, try and bring some life back to this dead plant. But little things like that here and there that I just love to add. Uh, little spots here where the, the texturing kind of rolls over, all these piles of leaves that are just meant to show like leaves from all the trees in the area, maybe blown off of the sea, come and collect on the, the dock here. This is supposed to be like salt, uh, just obviously some glow lichen, uh, but it's supposed to act like salt deposits coming off of the saltwater lake. One thing I thought was really cool, this is actually like the first thing that I added to this dock. Uh, we found these guardian fossils and uh, weirdly enough, they actually add a water breathing effect that we're not really going to use because uh, there's not much that we can do underneath here. They're supposed to stay out of the water. That's kind of the point of a dock. But I, thought, I still thought it was really cool nonetheless. 
And we did find a way to add all of these chipped workbenches all around. I believe we're still missing a couple of the workbenches, maybe two or three of them, but most of them are outside. We'll probably stick a few on the inside because the inside is not quite done yet. We have a couple of things laid out, but uh, for the most part, this is not complete. I'm super excited to play around with the interior. As much fun as I had with the exterior, uh, I think the interior is going to be a lot more of a challenge because I want to try and fit all of my storage, all of the workbenches, and everything else that we might need as well as like a kitchen so we can play around with Farmer's Delight and there's not a lot of room. Uh, so currently we had to get a little creative with some hidden storage. We'll see how we can incorporate that into the build proper, but uh, it's gonna be a challenge nonetheless and definitely not as big as a challenge as the outside was. The only thing that really took a long time with this build was just experimenting. And I had a lot of fun experimenting with everything. As you can see, the chest monster grew from like an inventory size to uh, nearly two and a half double chests full. So uh, there's still a lot that we have to discover with all the mods that we have. And uh, I'm just, I'm excited for it. But on top of the interior of the house, we also need to do a bit of terraforming. We're not going to leave this path up to the house as gravel. We'll leave most of it gravel because these are gravel shores. We don't want to ruin too much of the natural terrain, but we do want to make it feel like a person's actually living here. Past that, I don't think that there's much else that we could do with this. I have loved just walking around and looking at it from different angles. I, uh... I can't wait to experiment with all these builds, and uh, I don't think we're going to have a set in stone theme for this modded series. I think we're going to try and do our best to just have fun with all the mods and we're definitely going to be more of the uh, the buildy side of this mod pack than anything else. Uh, we're not going to go, I, I do have create installed but we're not going to go too far into that. We're not going to go heavy into automation. We might do some light automation but past just the bare bone basics we're really just going to focus on building. And now I'm going to go back to vanilla Minecraft and I'm going to cry because there isn't as much variation in the blocks and not as many fun things to use. It's okay. I'll be all right. I don't even know what we should call this aesthetic for this build. It's not like cottage core, maybe, or like Bass Pro Shop core, maybe? I think I might have just offended a couple of you. So it's been a little while, and I still haven't caught a mending book. I've been fishing, I've been getting other books, but still no mending. But I haven't only been fishing. If I just put that there and we walk around to the front of our house, I actually finished the interior as well. And this is what we landed on. The general idea I wanted to go with for this build is just a very cluttered, very lived in, very homey feel. We did after all model this after a fish house and most fish houses tend to be a little cluttered. So we've got ropes dangling everywhere. We've got little shelves, lots of cupboards, lots of clutter all over the place, spilled baskets. Uh, just lots of little stuff that's going to make this place feel that much more cluttered and uh, yeah, lived in. So from the front door here, we have kind of the main area, I suppose. Uh, you'll see a lot of storage around here. I tried to make it so that we didn't have a single storage room this uh, this series, I suppose. So we've, we tried our best to find very clever ways to hide storage. Uh, so you notice that around here, this is kind of the main storage area, I suppose. And then we also blocked off a wall. Oop. Locked off a wall for our bedroom uh, where he can come and sleep and also have a lot more storage. We actually are able to fit uh, these two tall wardrobes because of the top texture into the floor. So we actually have a lot of storage space down here. But moving on to the upstairs, you'll notice there's a lot of paintings on the wall. Uh, also reminiscent of a fish house because you'll have a lot of pictures of like family or like your trophies and stuff. We can't really have a picture of us holding up a fish because uh, I can't figure out how to do the custom painting models. But uh, the idea is there. But moving on, this is the upstairs. We have our kitchen here where we can practice all of the farmer delight stuff. We have a little stove, a cast iron pan, a pot up here on top of our fridge, and some lovely granite countertops that hold a lot of our storage as well. A lot of this area up here is kind of like the naturey stuff, uh, some wooden materials over there. And I, I kind of tried to section everything out into different spaces of the house, like downstairs in the bedroom is all of our rock bits. Over there is where all of our valuables are. Uh, this is kind of like mob loots and stuff. And then up here is more nature elements. And then back here, uh, which you'll see in a second, is kind of just some random stuff. So we did try and keep it area specific, uh, but you know, uh, we, we did our best with the little bit of space that we had. I do really love these really cute dining chairs. I thought they were adorable and uh, it's very small space up here. I've, I consider just not having this third one here, but at the same time, I really like having uh, this this very narrow thing that we have to walk through. It's kind of weird. I don't I don't really get it. 
But moving on to the last room of the house, we have our kind of little workstation, our little nook be something like that uh, over here we're storing all of our enchanted books that we've got from fishing we actually have a lot of overflow here uh, still no mending like I said earlier but this is where we fit in our final workstation uh, for the chip mod and we also have our furniture workbench which gets us some of these and uh, these little things here which this is kind of like a little footrest but it's technically a bench so uh, yeah we would use this here and there uh, these little couches are super cute and I think that's it. Oh yeah, the ceiling is made of barrels, like I was saying earlier. We just kind of have a lot of random storage stuff up here. <laughs> a lot of our mob heads uh, that we collected throughout our adventures. And yeah, that is pretty much the entire house. Very small, but we were able to surprisingly fit everything that we own in these uh, those couple little areas of chests that you see. Uh, so like there's little barrels hidden here. These are throughout the, uh, the chip mod. That's how we got these different barrel textures. Uh, and yeah, I think that's that's pretty much all I have to say. We definitely still need to get to some terraining out here, but I think we're gonna save that for next episode because right now I uh, really just need to get a video out because it's been a little bit of time since my last video. But I'm super happy with the way that this came out. I love playing around with all the mods, all the modded blocks that we have to, to our disposal and uh, just trying to make it work uh, in kind of a new style, I suppose. I really don't know what to call this style. Uh, like we said, we mirrored it off of a fish house, but I don't know what kind of category that fits into. It's not quite cottage core, even though it is very cluttered and chaotic like cottage core is, but uh, maybe we just coined that new phrase, uh, Bass Pro Shops Core, and we just run with that. But with that being said, I believe that is all we have time for today. Ladies and gentlemen, people of all ages, I appreciate you sticking around to this point in the video. And uh, if you guys have any like mod suggestions you want me to look at, try out, uh, please send them my way. And of course, if you want to play on this mod pack, there will be a link in the description to a course forge uh, folder website something. I'll figure it out. Uh, we'll get that mod pack up for you all to enjoy alongside me. And I'll keep it updated if I add any other mods to it. But for now... Uh, we got to end this episode. I got to get it out to y'all. And uh, yeah, I will see you in the next one. Bye, everybody. Oh, and, and I hope you have a wonderful day.